Welcome back to This Week in Magic Online Finance. Let's start with the news. And the big news this week, of course, is that Hour of Devastation not only is it legal and standard, but we have some actual tournament results from Star City Games Open Cincinnati. While I haven't seen the top eight play out yet, I'm a little bit back in time on Sunday afternoon. I've seen enough of the matches on stream to get a sense of where the format is heading. White Blue Monument was one of the best performing decks all weekend. It may not have actually gained much from Hour of Devastation, but it appears really well positioned in the format going forward. White Blue Monument is a fairly cheap deck to build right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see minor to moderate price increases across the board. I'm talking about cards like Spell Queller and Selfless Spirit, both of which were worth quite a bit more in a previous standard format, Hammer Militia Captain, Bygone Bishop, newer cards like Dust to Dawn, Westvale Abbey, which is really all over the format right now, and all of the white-blue dual lands. Now the other color combination that really impressed me this weekend was blue and red. Uh, the Torrential Gear Hulk style blue-red control decks were doing well, the Grixis control decks, the new ones with Nicol Bolas at the top end, they looked good. Uh, even blue-red Emerge was there. I'm expecting these style of control decks to be a big, big part of the format going forward, which bodes well for cards like Chandra, Torch of Defiance, uh, Kozilek's Return, Hour of Devastation, Nicol Bolas, all that good stuff that we really want wanted to be good out of Hour of Devastation, at least on week one, it's looking like we're on track for that kind of format. And that gets us right into Gaining Ground, the segment where I talked about the cards that gained the most value this week. And in Standard, the two biggest gainers were Chandra Torture of Defiance and Coastal X Return. People really want to play these red base control decks. And that brought Chandra up seven tickets from 22 to 29, and brought Coastal X Return six tickets up from 14 to 20. Now, week one of a format is just too early for me to tell you whether these cards are going to keep gaining value, whether they're going to drop, whether they've reached new equilibrium. I don't know. I don't know whether something's going to come around next week that really just sort of slays these red base control decks or whether they're going to stay at the top of the market. But I would say for now, these games look pretty legitimate to me. I would not expect an immediate crash. It may not have gained the most ground this week, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Startled Awake, which tripled in price up to over six tickets. Why? Fraying Sanity, the mill card in Hour of Devastation. Now, the issue is... These two cards don't play all that well together, and I don't think a mill deck is going to be competitive. I'm selling this one into the hype right away. Now, over in Modern, a really interesting card gained the most ground this week. It was Giralf's Messenger, a zombie from the original Innistrad block. It doubled in price, going from four tickets to about eight tickets. Now, the reason for the gain was that Saffron Olive featured the card Giralf's Messenger in Against the Odds, his very popular video series, and it was in a modern deck based around the card Solemnity. People love Saffron Olive's content. He's one of the most popular, interesting content creators out there, and whenever he does something cool, those cards go up in price, and Giralf's Messenger was no exception. Those price spikes tend to last about a week, maybe two, then they drop off unless the deck ends up being legitimate. I personally, I'm not sold on this. I'm selling my Giralf's Messengers into the hype, but some people in the modern community really think this thing has legs, and if you're on their side, maybe you want to pick some up? Up to you. Now let's talk about the biggest loser. And in standard, it was actually a pretty small loser. Uh, Liliana the Last Hope went from 36 tickets down to 33, to a loss of just three tickets. I'm not too worried about this drop. First of all, Lilian the Last Hope sees play in both Modern and Legacy, which bodes really well for her long-term price trends. And secondly, Zombies? I don't know if it's that poorly positioned in the new metagame. It doesn't seem to be that popular at this moment, but there's still weeks and weeks to go as we figure out what the new format is. Get back to me if Liliana is still following in a week or two. Now we get to Modern, where the biggest loser actually was a fairly big loser. It's Chalice of the Void, which dropped 8 tickets from 53 down to 45. That's a fairly significant drop for a card that spent a good portion of the spring and summer just gaining, gaining, gaining ground. Now I tried to figure out what was going on with Chalice, and I couldn't quite get there. Uh, in Modern, it's primarily used as a way for Eldrazi Tron to fight against Death's Shadow. They play it as a main deck card, even though in most formats, Chalice of the Void is a sideboard card. Eldrazi Tron is still a good deck. Death Shadow, both variants, still good decks. The only thing I can think of, Death Shadow is becoming maybe a little less popular, and people may be focusing a little more on rogue ways to beat the format. It's also the summer, people are playing a little less. That may have something to do with it too. But unless you see a major shift in the modern metagame, which I haven't seen, I would expect Chalice of the Void to start going up again the next time 
anytime there's a major modern tournament and people want to start investing in the tier one tickets again. Now the sneak of this week is Mox Opal. Mox Opal's been gaining ground since mid-June. It's up about 15 tickets since then, and that's because Affinity keeps gaining in popularity. Affinity is the second most popular deck in Modern right now, and it took three of the top eight slots at Grand Prix Las Vegas at their Modern Open. And that's an event that's so popular, people continue to still look at it for results. At this point, I'm not sure I would sell my Mox Opals under 60 tickets. Let's finish out the week by taking another look at the MTGO Traders hot list. You can find it yourself at mtgotraders.com slash hotlist, and it's got the cards that MTGO Traders is spending the most on right now, which means they're in high demand. This week, I thought I'd put the spotlight on a fairly recent set that doesn't get a lot of press despite having a lot of really interesting cards in it, some of which are really hot right now. Oath of the Gatewatch. You may know Oath of the Gatewatch best for Kalitas Trader of Get. It's been a hot card for a really long time, and not much has changed. You can still get more than 10 tickets for that one. More interesting to me, Wandering Fumarole. Thanks to the proliferation of these red-blue decks, Wandering Fumarole is buying for more than 10 tickets now. That's awesome. Now, of course, Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher are on the hot list, too. They're iconic, they're powerful, they're being played across multiple formats. Uh, but they're joined by a newcomer, World Breaker. World Breaker was good in standard for a minute, uh, it may actually be getting good again thanks to the new red-green ramp decks uh, being played with Hour of Promise. And if that card starts seeing a lot of play again, that price can go up. That's all I got for you this week. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more high-quality Magic Gathering content.